Hey everybody, I've decided instead of taking out my normal Monday slots for the tack wing, I'm going to be adding a new fourth video per week. Well, it probably won't be week, it'll probably be every two to three weeks of Star Trek Attack Wing Tuesday. And this is going to be the first video of that series of the f brand new, well, I wouldn't say it's brand new. It's been out, been out for two months now, almost two months. Came out on December 28th. The Federation vs. Klingon starter set. And this is a new starter set. Uh, completely revamped with, any, with a new rule book with four ships uh, that represent the beginning of the Klingon Civil War uh, in from Star Trek The Next Generation. So that's one I think is one of the better things about Attack Wing is that there's a lot more source material where you can actually pull your your kits and your games from actual episodes. And I said this is this is Kimpex Vorcha class ship here. So this is literally the beginning of the Klingon Civil War. Um, and I think that's an awesome way to build a starter deck. Or a starter's box. Again, this is updates got updated paint jobs, updated rules, updated cards, so everything is brand new about this. So this is literally Attack Wing 2.0 in a box. So hold on one second here, we'll get it open and see what we can find. Okay, so here we have the contents of the starter set. First, we're going to have all the tokens and templates and maneuvered templates, um, objective markers, dials. This is a mine token, a new mine token. I like this one. Uh, all redone target locks, and of course, all the new movement templates. Sets of dice five defense, five um, offense dice. Four sets of bases and pegs for the dials. Of course, the silica gel. The new updated damage deck with the new format, so it's pretty clear. And then we have all the stacks of cards. That comes with 36, I think, cards. And of course, we've got the new updated paint job on the ships, so I'm not going to be keeping this box. You can actually use this box to store this stuff. I mean, there's plenty of room in here store the stuff and put a window in here so there's nothing that would so it could nothing's gonna fall out of it. No, so now we have to try and get the, the ships out of the plastic. Oh there's more stuff. So while I push these ships out of here. I'm not going to worry about the containers because I don't really need them. So here we have the new rulebook. Again, this is an updated, streamlined, and clarified rulebook, which includes um, pretty much all the facts that have happened over the course of the game, um, all the erratas, and some new rules, changes to initiative, changes into the rule of three, and stuff like that. Here we have this, the six and the range template and the planet. Okay. And then we have the quick start rules. Quick start rules. If you don't want to worry about the full rules. Um, so yeah. So that's what you get in the box. So there's two main things we want to look at, of course, is the ships and the cards. Let's see what we got here. Some more linen. So the two ships that it comes with, of course, is the Enterprise D, which is pivotal to the Klingon Civil War. And it's a pretty nice paint job. The only thing I don't like, of course, is that you got black here for the life pods instead of yellow. It should be. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. You got a nice metallic blue on the deflector dish. Metallic blue here on the warp nade cells. And you know what? I don't see here any of, which I've seen on a lot of previous models, and that is flash. It looks like they actually went to the effort to clean up the models. I don't see any connecting points to the mold. I don't see any flash lines or assembly lines. This is a significant step up in quality over what I've seen previously. And this is the USS Sutherland, which is what Data was commanding during the blockade. Okay, there are some mold lines on here, but mold lines are different than flashing. Generally, yeah, this is a way better model than they've ever probably put out before. And the Sutherland mold isn't that great. It's probably well worn out, but... Um, yeah, and this is, the Enterprise is pretty good. This is a little bit worse, maybe because of the mold lines on the bottom here, but 
quality of these ships is way better. Let's take a look at the Vorcha class. So we got some a nice green metallic paint with some various areas of different colored greens. Some darker, some lighter. Right. Again, a very clean model. Very few mold lines here. Sprue attachment points, very nice. Very, again, significant jump in quality here. And here we have a Birch of Bird of Prey. And this thing is just, this is probably nice. It's not only a nice green metallic on there, but paint job's really clean on here as well. And again, no mold lines or attachment points or flash. There are a couple mold lines, but just getting rid of the sprue attachment points really helps a lot. Guns look really nice. So yeah, again, the quality of these models has gone way up in recent months, and this is probably the best I've ever seen from these guys. So we got a whole stack of cards here. Some of these are really amazing. Uh, really amazing. Okay, so let's just start at the top here. So we got the Exocomp, four point tech, planning phase, two place two, two tokens on this card, repair one damage to the ship's hull. So that means you can just repair one damage every other turn. Um, no action, no restrictions, just very nice. And it's not unique. So you'd actually have two on a ship and at least repair one hull every turn. Um, nice, very nice card, very efficient. See Nimby class movement template. Okay, so this is where the game has really changed a lot, and that is in the secondary weapons, especially the photon torpedoes. And it has gone down to two points for photon torpedoes. Attack value of this weapon is the ship's primary weapon value plus one. Spin the target lock, disable this card, and target an opposing ship, and it may convert all blanks into battle stations. This is what photon torpedoes have always should have been. Um, so you know, on a three attack ship, giving boosting up to four attack. Um, is going to be great because all you need is a target lock and a battle stations and you can have you know basically full conversions on your attack so it's always going to hit with every single every single one because you're always either going to get a blank battle stations or hit so this is an absolutely fantastic secondary weapon all right of course it's going to be better on bigger ships but even on a set on a three attack ship this is going to be great and this definitely needs to go on to the What's that Jaeger class ship? The one that doesn't disable to fire torpedoes. Yeah, that's nice. I like that card a lot. Make it so. I'm going to try to not go too much in each individual card. This ship may perform two actions on admiral cards, captain cards, or crew upgrades equipped to it as free actions. So you get two for one once. Probably don't need to paint that as this card anyway. Uh, so let's see here. Deanna Troy, two points. Planning phase after all ships have chosen their maneuver. Discard this card and target two opposing ships. Look at the maneuver dials of the target ships. Then this ship may change its chosen maneuver. Target shoot ship's maneuvers may not be changed for the rest of the game round. Two points, one shot. Uh, that's not too bad. That's actually quite useful. Quite useful. At the right time. Try and separate out all the... Uh, here's Captain Picard. So we have two elite talents. Play action. Place two time tokens on this card and target all friendly ships. Place a battle station token besides this ship and all target ships. So when you put time tokens on the captain, it doesn't change the skill. It just disables the text on the new rules. So there's a diff, which is different than a disable. Time tokens are different than disable. So every other turn, you can give an action for everybody getting a battle station. So this is definitely a fleet card, which definitely represents the. Um, blockade quite nicely, I do believe. Let's see here, let's start with the Enterprise D. So we're gonna try, I'm trying to separate the clean out cards and clean on cards as we go. Enterprise D, when attack when defending the attacking ship rolls minus one attack die. <laughs> Fantastic ability. Uh, it's a two point discount over the previous Enterprise D, which the, which has a three sixty shot with three dice. But yeah, that's really nice ability. Minus one attack die. And if you can stack it on with something like uh, the Dominion upgrade where you get minus two attack die, it's going to be very hard to do any damage to them. Uh, 
Tactical Station. This is actually a reprint from a OP pack. Um, yeah, this is a direct reprint, so this card's been around for a while. It was just a part of the Stargazer price ship. So this is kind of nice to see. So when attacking, disable this card again, plus one attack die. Or when attacking, discard, discard to place, roll two attack dice. And it replaces itself, so it adds one weapon upgrade. And it's limited to one per ship. I like this card a lot. Riker Maneuver Enterprise from the uh, uh, that one movie no one talks about. When defending, the attacking ship is not in this ship's primary arc. Discard this card. Remove all tokens beside the attacking ship. And, re and place an ox token besides the attacking ship. Besides this ship and the attacking ship. Well, that's very... F so, if the attacker is not in your primary arc, you can get rid of their battle stations and target lock. And give them an ox token on top of it. That could definitely... That's not quite an attack cancellation, but it's really, really close. Jordi LaForge, activation phase. After the ship reveals its maneuver, place two time tokens. The ship may increase or decrease the speed of the revealed maneuver by two. And cannot perform an action. The game round its effect is activated. Eh, that's too bad. It definitely needs to be able to keep their actions. Captain Data, target a cloaked opposing ship. Remove the ship's cloak token and enable its shields. That's a lot more less complex than the other data from the Sutherland. That's pretty simple. Action, you're no longer cloaked. Have a nice day. Which would be really good against interface generators, for sure. So here is the generic Galaxy class for 22 points. Very nice, very nice. Galaxy class maneuver dial. Uh, Miles O'Brien planning phase, disable this card, remove a disable token from beside from a tech or weapon upgrade equipped to this ship. So, let's see, free, dis uh, free torpedo every turn. And you use like flocks or something to re-enable him. There's another crew cars that does that. So that's a good way to get your torpedoes frequent more frequently. Christopher Hobson, when attacking, if the defending ship is cloaked, the defending ship rolls minus two defense dice. And that's a passive ability. This for two points. If you're firing against a cloak ship, they get minus two. I don't know how useful that's ever going to be. It's obviously meant for this pack because you're going to be playing Federation versus Klingons. But in general, OP may be not so useful, but um, unless you see a lot of scimitars in your in meta, in which case I'd probably play them. Still, that's not a bad for a passive. It's not a discard. It's not um, anything. It's just a passive ability. It's a good way to get a crew card if you need crew for something else. Captain Riker, target this ship or friendly ship. Crew upgrades equipped to the target ship cannot be affected by opposing effects this game round. So it's a pretty bad protection, and that's really all he does. Six skill, four points. Uh, here we go. USS Sutherland. When defending, cancel one hit. Pure, straight up, every time he defends, it's one less damage. This card is amazing for 23 points for 4144. Four, four. This is great. This is just an absolutely fantastic card. It's a good way to keep your stuff alive. Uh, one more Federation card. Better really crush your disable this card. Remove a disable token from a crew upgrade. So it basically transfers a disable token from another one to her. Or action, discard, discard, equip a crew upgrade with a cost of 4 SP or less that was discarded from this ship to this ship. She can literally bring back somebody from the dead for a cost of 4 points or less. Uh, cost would be a good one to use on that. And here is the generic Nebula class for just 19 points. Again, that Sutherland's ability is just so strong. This is probably the ace card of the, or ace federation card of this pack. There are a lot of them that are really, really good, but this one is amazing. Let's go over the Klingon cards. Let's see, we're already at 13. Let's see if I can keep this under 20. Uh, 
generic cavort. So the other ship is a cavort class. 20 points for generic cavort, which is the price of a generic Borel now. That's great. So I need like six of these. Kimpek, who's also an admiral. Action spin one shield token from the ship, place three of eight tokens from besides this ship. So you discard one shield, and then you get three of eight tokens that round. Um, yeah, that's that's actually pretty good. Especially if you have some way to repair your shields. Uh, Worf, when attacking if the ship is cloaked, convert all blanks to hits. <laughs> no wonder he's five points. That is an incredibly and powerful ability. If the ship is cloaked, convert all blanks to hits. You have Admiral Galrons to get battle stations, and that's just a devastating amount of damage every single time, passively. Wow, that is that's an incredible card. Klingon Beck, when attacking, discard this card, convert one hit to a crit. Well, that's pretty good, actually. It's a one-point crew. And you can convert a hit to so if you're mid game, you've gotten through their shields and you can do a crit to their hull, or you're doing a damage to their hull, you can hit it, um, change it to a crit instead. And that's for one point. That's very very good for one point. Blood oath, discard this card, target the captain equipped to an opposing ship, and target the captain equipped to this ship. The controllers of the target captains both roll five attack dice. Whoever rolls the most battle stations rerolling ties. As plus two their target captain skill, the other player must discard their target captain. <laughs> so this is another thematic card. I probably wouldn't ever see in any sort of competitive play, but I would definitely um, call this a fun card to play for Klingons. Especially, you know, I'm sure there's some cheap Klingon captains. You might just throw some throwaway captain chance to take out the card or something else more important. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Not very thematic, not very uh, OP playable, but very fun. Fun. Disruptor Cannon. Attack. Disable this card and target an opposing ship. The defending ship has a ox token beside it. Is your pulse one that plus one attack die? So this is ox. Um, auxiliary. So it doesn't necessarily mean rear target arc anymore. It means auxiliary power target arc. Um, and that's because the Vorture class in this, its ox arc is uh, in the front firing arc. I can show you that. I'm going to have to dig that out to show you that. Um, the finishing has, um, so yeah, two points for a five point um, attack from your auxiliary target arc. Or auxiliary firing arc. So your cohort class, IKS Born. Uh, when attacking, the ship is cloaked. The defending ship is at range one. It gains plus two attack dice. If the defending ship is at range two, the ship gains plus one attack dice. So it actually adds a bonus to the to the range if it's cloaked. Not bad for twenty-four points. A couple point discount over the old cohort classes, and that could be at range one. You're throwing six dice. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Toral, when defending, the ship may convert one battle station to one evade for two points. Not quite as good as Hood Riker, but on the same vein. Still worth taking. Absolutely worth taking. Today is a good day to die. Action, discard this card. All ships may convert all hits into crits this game round. This card is pretty clear. It's all ships. No, on both sides, every single ship, all ships may convert all hits into crits this game round. Not all of your ships, all ships. It is a good, this is, this, it today is a good day to die. That's what this card does. Uh, Kavort class maneuver dial. Generic Vorcha class for 22. <laughs> Gotta give me some more of these. 22 points for generic Vorcha is insane. Um, Vorcha class maneuver dial. Torp torpedo Fusillade. I'm not even, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. Cost and attack value of this weapon is equal to the ship's primary weapon value. Attack, remove this card from the game. It's not discarded. And target all the opposing ships. Make a separate attack roll against each target ship. So this is one of those things that you have to get in the right spot and to use it. But it could be quite devastating if you do. 
Uh, Klingon Helmsman. Place two time tokens in this card and perform a scan action as a free action if you need to do scans on Klingons for some reason. Uh, reinforced bulkheads. When defending, the ship receives a face-up damage card. Turn that damage card face down unless it's a warp core breach. That's really good three points, especially for Klingons with their cloak ships. Um, might even be good on the scimitar. So just ignore crits, basically, which you get for that. It's totally worth three points. Uh, let's see. Kempex Attack Cruiser. Tar action target all cloaked friendly ship within range one to do. Place a battle, sto battle station token besides all target ships. That's a pretty good action. Very similar to the Captain Picard, um, except it's a ship. Kempex Attack Cruiser. 25 points. Captain Lursa. Captain Bator. At the beginning of the game round, you may flip this card. When defending, if the ship is cloaked, adds two defense dice. Or when attacking, if the ship is cloaked, plus one attack die. Huh, that's a nice game mechanic. So you can just, every round, you can pick which one of these captains you're going to have on there. Both captain skill four. Might as well stack with the other Lursa and Bator that's out there. Interesting. But yeah, just the ability to choose one or the other, defensive or offensive. That's a very useful card. Duras. Uh, Romulan, Romulan Elites and Klingon Elites equipped to this card cost 3 points. Elite Talent Upgrades equipped to this captain start the game face down, flip of face down. Elite Talent Upgrade equipped to this captain face up first time it is used. Oh, okay, so you just play any 3 points for any Romulan or Klingon Elite Talent. Not too bad. 6 points. Five points for a six captain card, though. And crew Kern action discard this card. Equip a weapon upgrade that costs five or less that was discarded from the ship to the ship. So again, that's why the torpedo full said uh, says remove from the game and not discarded because it is not discarded. Fusilad, fusilad. I don't know. That's why it's not discarded. So that is the contents of the new Star Trek Attack Wing. Um, starter set, which is the Klingon Civil War. So if you ever thought about getting into Attack Wing, this is a great box to do it. So it's kind of, again, it's the starter set, so it comes with all the movement templates and everything. Let me show you that auxiliary target arc. The new sets of rules. Here it is. This is the auxiliary target arc on the Covert class that comes with it. So that's where you can use a Disruptor Cannon, is, is in that auxiliary target arc. Oh, these tokens are very nice, by the way. Yeah, all kinds of, got all the mission tokens, objective tokens, all the maneuver templates, admiral token, time tokens. There's all the. Yeah. Shields. Oh. And of course, there are now three faction packs out Romulan, Dominion, and Ferengi. And each faction pack is 30 bucks for four ships and playable cards in each one. So you can instantly build a faction of your choice uh, from that. So, you know, for 100 bucks, you get the starter set. Two faction packs, that's 12 ships for 100 bucks. More than enough cards to play with. And I think that's just an incredible value. Um, if you haven't played this game before, you can get, like I said, you can get 12 ships for 100 bucks. Um, in four different factions. And there's more faction packs coming out. There's going to be an independent, there's going to be a Abrams Verse faction pack. Um, there's a lot of new stuff coming out for this game, and I really hope you consider picking this up, especially if you're a fan of Star Trek and if you're a fan of X-Wing, the miniatures game, but you also like Star Trek, play this game. It plays exactly the same, um, except, of course, the captains and ships are separate, so the, so it's not dependent. You can put any captain on any ship. You're not limited to certain pilots and ship combinations. Um, so that's why you can have... Kirk on the scimitar, or Picard on the scimitar if you really wanted to. 
Some people don't like that. You don't have to play that way, but you can if you want to do fun things like that. Um, so yeah, any questions about the game, let me know. This is going to be a long video because, this is a, again, this is a starter set. There's a lot to it. A lot of cards, a lot of room, and a lot going on. Like I said, there's easily more than enough cards to play to two-player game with lots of tricks, lots of exit auxiliary weapons. You've got two ships on each side. This is this in of itself is going to be quite a bit of fun, and with those faction packs, it's not hard to expand your game. So again, if you if you like X-wing and you like Star Trek, pick up Attack Wing. You will with these new rules and new models, you will not be disappointed. Thanks for watching.